welcome aziza thank you this is a vijay uh, from india and you are most welcome uh, in this session with my students the students are from uh, uh, 11th class and uh, they are studying non medical uh, physics chemistry mathematics uh, they are primary subject once again it's a very uh, pleasure to see you again thank you thank you lot one of my students uh, yes it's really nice to to meet you everyone and i'm so excited because i really want to learn a lot about your culture and at the same time i really want to share my culture so i think that our this i mean zoom session would be so useful for me and you and um i know that you prepared some questions for me so hopefully i will i will try to answer all your questions Indeed. by the way can you uh teach me some uh, words in your language as well okay we will try one of my students uh, shagun going to uh, introduce herself Okay. Kindly come. Okay. Kindly come. Kindly come. Yeah, great. At my age. Uh huh. Can you can you uh speak a little bit louder, please? Yes, ma'am. Which box limit? This big circle limit. Yeah, questions? Yeah, sure. Feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I want to ask one question. Uh -huh. um, what is widely spoken language in Uzbekistan? Okay, thank you for your question. Very interesting question. Uh, so actually the official language in Uzbekistan is Uzbek language, but uh, it depends also on region. Uh, because some people speak not only Uzbek language, but other languages as well as a second language. For example, the majority of population who live in the capital of Uzbekistan, which is Tashkent, they uh, speak Russian language as well. But if you go to the other cities of Uzbekistan, uh, there are people who speak not only Uzbek language, but Tajik and Russian as well. So I can say that people who live in Uzbekistan, they are uh multilingual people because they speak uh two or three languages okay thank you Aziza. uh one another my student uh, mr Ani is going to ask question okay good afternoon ma'am my name is anik and i want to ask you one question that what is your name and its meaning okay so uh my name is aziza and uh, the meaning of my name is like something precious, something like dear, precious. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So nice to meet you. Uh, one other student uh, who is going to uh, Aditi. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I want to say something about you. Since Azura goes away. Can you repeat, please? Because uh, you are not all people. Since Azura goes away. Can you repeat, please? Since Azura goes away. Thank you. Thank you. You are gorgeous, too. Thank you. Thank you. But I want to ask a question. What is your favorite game? Ah, my favorite game? Uh, yes, yes. My favorite game. So, um, unfortunately, these days, I don't have like enough time to play games. And, uh, but when I was a child, I used to play a lot of games, of course. And my favorite one was uh, building blocks. Uh, have you ever heard about uh, Lego? Like bu building blocks? 
Uh, yes. When I was a child, I used to play this game, like building blocks. I was building castles, cities, planes. Common. Common in India. Thank you for your interesting question. Thank you. So one of the uh, other children, Mr. Sukhir Singh. Hi, hello. Hello, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my question is, why do you get never slide by night and never throw it out? Can you repeat, please? Why Uzbek bread never slice by night and never throw it out? Uh, honestly, very, very good question because honestly, I don't know the answer for this question, but but uh, I can guess. So I think it's uh, is connected to the history mm -hmm. of uh, our culture uh, because I think in the past times uh, we didn't have uh, like knife. I mean, uh, as a a kitchen utensil, and this is the reason why they just uh, they didn't uh, like sli slice it, and they just uh, like slice wanted slice. to share, wanted to share the bread with everyone. That you like prepared for this meeting today. Uh, actually, I prepared a kind of short presentation. If you want, I can share it with you. Sure. And tell you. My country more I like to show some pictures, but I think in order to share my screen, you need to uh like. I think uh, you yeah, are. You give me permission to to share uh, my screen. Okay, so then let me start. Uh, here in the first slide, we can see beautiful picture, right? What do you think? What place is that? Uh, you know, don't know. Uh, they don't know. And Can you repeat? Uh, they don't know. Ah, uh, they don't know. Maybe you will try to guess. Like, to maybe you will try to provide some options. Maybe so what did? Is, is what is place is that? Ashton. Come again, please. Ashton. Ashton. Okay, so actually this place is called Madrasa in Uzbek language, like Madrasa. And in the past times, like uh, in the 18th or 17th century, this place was kind of school. So uh, students at that time, they went to this Madrasa, to this place to study. So the picture that you can see in the first slide, this is a school old school okay? okay so now i will i will tell you some background information about myself so as you know my name is Aziza. i'm 31 years old and i received my bachelor's degree in teaching english as a foreign language and my master's degree in teaching english as a second language so i basically speak uh, three languages my first language is russian the second language is uzbek the third language is English, and I also speak uh, Turkish, like a little bit. It's kind of like basic level. Uh, I can ask some questions in Turkish. Uh, I can ask, how are you doing? Like, like basically simple questions. So uh, about my hobbies. So I'm like crazy about uh, sports in general. And I usually go to the gym to work out. So this is my first hobby. The second one, I really like to watch movies in English language. And the third hobby is dancing. So do you guys have any hobbies, by the way? Uh, yes, we have lots of hobbies. Uh -huh. uh, playing cricket and badminton, reading books. That's wonderful, great. What about others? Hobbies, backlash, playing cricket and running. Playing cricket, wow, that's great. I know that cricket is very famous in India, right? Yes, yes. Okay, good. My favorite of these workout for cricket playing. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. 
That's great. That's great. So now let me tell you about my country. So as you can see here in the next slide, yeah, you can see uh, my country, which is described on the map. So where, where Uzbekistan is located? Actually, it is located in Central Asia. And we uh, have borders with Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Afghanistan. So these countries are our neighboring countries that are located um, like next to us. So uh, then the capital of Uzbekistan is in Tashkent, it's Tashkent, and uh, it is located somewhere here. I hope it is visible, this one. So this the city is called Tashkent, and this is the capital of Uzbekistan. And uh, uh, there are also other cities, but we call them regions. And uh, there are 12 regions in Uzbekistan, and uh, like uh, we declared our independence on uh, August 31st in 1991. And uh, there are approx approximately like 35 million people who live in Uzbekistan. And official language, as I've already mentioned, is Uzbek language. So now uh, let's see how far is Uzbekistan located from India? So I was searching in the Google, uh, the pictures that can show us the distance. So I think this picture can illustrate uh, the distance between Uzbekistan and India. And as you can see, uh, these two countries are located not so far, so far from each other. So there are only like Afghanistan and Pakistan between Uzbekistan and India. So we can say that we are neighboring countries actually because we are not located so far, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, now I will show you the picture of our flag. I will. I, I want to just talk about it briefly. So as you can see here, like four colors, but each color ha has its own like meaning, like symbol. Like for example, the blue color, it's uh, like the, uh, it means that th there is always peace in Uzbekistan and here, like peaceful people live. I mean, the people who are for peace. So uh, the white color uh, here and then the green color. So of course the green color represents our nature, a beautiful nature, beautiful trees, mountains, flowers, and the red one, the red color, this is like the blood uh, of our ancestors. So the, uh, the red color actually represents the, uh, like the ancestors, the like people who, who, who lived in our country many, many years ago. So amazing. amazing. Uh, we can see the alphabet. I know that Indian uh, alphabet is uh, very different from the Uzbek one. I think uh, 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 almost they are same, but uh, there is no C. Mm -hmm. C for cat. That is uh, and uh, I J K L M N O P Q R R W. W is not yeah. there. No, yeah. we don't have this letter. Uh, there are 26 letters uh, in English alphabet we uh, use in our uh, language, in English language. So uh, Uzbekistan is also a multicultural country. It means that there are a lot of nationalities, uh, cultures, uh, other minorities who live in Uzbekistan. And this is the reason why I decided to put these pictures where you can see the representatives of different cultures and nationalities. So uh, overall, in Uzbekistan, we live not only Uzbeks, but Tajik people, Kazakh, Karakalpak, Russian, Kyrgyz, Turkmen, Tatar, Korean, Ukrainian, Azerbaijanis, Belarusians, and so on. So uh, in other words, uh, there are a lot of uh, different nationalities who live in Uzbekistan. So may I, uh, may I have a question, Aziza? Yeah, uh, 
the dress wearing uh, these girls they are representing the different uh, culture of your country from different region uh so not from different regions actually they are representing different nationalities so for example the girl on this picture which is on the right side uh the girl who is standing in the middle she is uzbek okay for example the girl who is uh here i mean the wearing this beautiful hat uh, she uh, represents Uyghur nationality and okay. the girl who is staying behind the Uzbek girl i mean the girl who is with this red beautiful hat she is russian and uh, the girl who is staying next to her she's ukrainian so all the girls who are in the picture, they represent different nationalities. Uh, they are not like, uh, I mean, uh, we we do have uh, like different regions in Uzbekistan and where uh, Uzbek people live, but they represent different cultures and nationalities. In India, we have a very rich, diverse uh, culture. Uh, uh, money based language uh, in dress up uh, in food and in language so uh, yes. i as i have remember uh, ina has wear uh, wear her costume on last day that girl mm -hmm. very good. exactly yes 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 uh, ina was exactly the yes i this guess uh, the russian Costume. She's Russian, yes. Amazing. Uh, as is, I say, amazing. amazing. Why? Because we can teach our students to respect diversity, to yes. see the other perspectives, to see that we are different, and actually the beauty is in this difference that we can learn from each other. Great. It's harmonic yeah. classes to the world. Yeah. So now I can uh, tell you about our education system in Uzbekistan. So uh, before you go to school, first you have to go to kindergarten. This is how we call it in Uzbekistan or preschool education. So first uh, children, they go to kindergarten and in the kindergarten, they are not taught any subjects, no subjects. They just go there to uh, socialize with other children and uh, they just play games. Um, they learn some uh, basic, uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, basic skills that okay. they will need to develop in the elementary school. So they just uh, try to write something, they try to read, but still they are not taught any subject. So okay. then, when they are at the age of six or seven, they go to primary school, which lasts for four years. So from the uh, first grade to the fourth grade, they go to the primary education. And after that, uh, when they go to the fifth grade, they go to the secondary uh, school. And the secondary school also lasts for uh, like four years from fifth till ninth grade. And after ninth grade, students have like option. If you can see in this table, and here we have like two options, you see? So they can go to the uh, lyceums or colleges. So if they go to the lyceum, they study there for three years. And uh, if they study in the lyceum, it will really help them to be prepared for the university. But if they go to the college, they will uh, get a profession. They will also study there for three years, but they will get a diploma that uh, will allow them to go somewhere and work. But there is also another choice. Students can stay at, uh, in the school, in the school and study until the 11th grade. And when they finish the 11th grade, they can go to the higher education. They can uh, enter the university and do their bachelor's degree. And it is approximately at the age of 18 or 19. So it uh, it is it depends on the field that you are going to study. If you choose, for example, medicine, it means that you have to study at least seven years to get your bachelor's degree. But uh, in general, 
uh, if you go to the uh, business field or uh, teaching education, in that case, you will need to study only four years. And after that, when uh, students finish their bachelor's degree, they can continue their studies and uh, apply for a master's degree, which lasts for two or three years. And after that period, which uh, lasts minimum for three years. Um, do you have any questions about uh, the stable? Or can you tell me briefly about your education system? Uh, is it different? Maybe we have some similarities. Uh, 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 let me ask one question. Uh, okay. uh, my students is a. Uh, they are curious about to know what academic calcium, what is this? Yeah, good question, thank you. So uh, in contrast to professional colleges, academic license, they do not give you any diploma, but uh, usually they're, um, I mean, the curriculum, the program and the subjects are very comprehensive and they will help you uh, to be prepared for the university. So, for example, if you want to uh, apply, uh, if you want to study at the university uh, to uh, which uh, specializes in um, business, for, for instance, you can go to the academic lyceum, which also specializes in business, and study there for three years, and then they will help you to be prepared for the university. So the chance that you will uh, apply to the university will be like higher. Okay. But uh, uh, in India, uh, our education setup is quite different. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now we we are also teaching new uh, national policy. Uh, but uh, it will some time. We, we have a system of first to five uh, primary school, first to fifth, and uh, second type uh, middle school, uh, six to eighth, and third type uh, the schools they have the classes from six to ten, and four type of schools, secondary schools, uh, as my school is secondary school, senior secondary school, and we have classes from six to onward up to twelfth standard. Yes. And uh, now you are interacting the students with their uh, in the 11th standard. And uh, their age group is uh, 15 to 16. Oh, I see. So after that, after completing uh, 10 plus 2, they will opt for higher education. They can uh, go for engineering, diploma, uh, bachelor degree, three year degree, existing system. So here I will just show you some pictures that were taken in our public schools. This is a, a class elementary school. As you can see, this is the lesson of English language. I think they're playing some games or singing songs. Yeah, this is also elementary school. And here's some pictures of Tashkent, the city where I live. This is the conference hall. Uh, usually, like the meetings are held here in conferences or uh, like international conferences. So, this is uh, the city where I live, Tashkent, the capital. Um, yeah, this is also the picture of my city. And what do you think? What place is that? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> Maybe any ideas? Uh, students are saying uh, it's metro. Yeah, right. This is subway. And this is one of the stations. Oh, and actually, people, people are, I mean, people who live in Uzbekistan, they're very proud of our subway because usually when tourists or uh, people, I mean, who visit Uzbekistan for the first time, uh, they really uh, like our subway because it's beautiful and decorated. Indeed, it's beautiful. Yes. So here are some pictures of subways in Tashkent. This is also one of the stations. 
So uh, just I, I will show you some pictures of historical sites. Uh, this is um, the city Samarkand. Uh, the city is called Bukhara. This one is Hiva. So as you can see, a lot of like historical uh, places and monuments. And here is the picture of Uzbek cuisine. So what do you think? Do we have like similar dishes? Very beautiful picture. Oh, by the way, by the way, Vijay, I, I do remember you cooked something with rice. Uh, this is the, I think this is the same dishes uh, I have cooked in USA. But maybe some ingredient may be different. Yeah, I think it's similar because I do remember you put you put something with rice and it was delicious. Uh, yes, it was uh, some vegetables. Yeah. Because I I uh, I tasted the dish that you cooked and the, this dish which is in the middle is called uh hello, and this is also cooked from like rice, meat, and uh um. We also we also. Oh. Okay, so yes, this is pilaf. It's cooked with like carrot, rice, onion, beef, or lamb. Uh, uh, this is only some... only, only uh, pronunciation is different, but I think everything is okay. You you have pronounced it pilaf, and we pronounce it pilaf. You oh, I see. Do you have something similar to this one? We call it samsa. Samosa. Uh, yes, we samosa. We take it. If we have permission, we will take every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how our cultures are actually similar. I think this it's, is a uh, non-veg. It's used at uh, lamb beef. Okay, but we yeah. use only potato. Oh, I see. I see. Vegetarian. Now I want to show some national costumes and dresses. So here, as you can see, the girls are dancing, national dance. And as you can see, uh, like Uzbek national dresses are very colorful. Like uh, the colors are very bright. I mean, the red, yes. So this part is called Dokhba. And in this picture, you can find uh, another uh, pictures in uh, uh, the cap you saw uh, it's named Dopi. Yes, this one is Dope. Dope. And we call it Topi. <laughs> Can you talk it? D, D replaced by T. Uh huh. So D, D is replaced by T. That is Topi. We call it Topi. Topi. Yes. Wow. So always the same, right? Yes. Many always things are similar. Yeah, and the last picture where you can see uh, national dresses and costumes. So, and that's all, I guess. Yeah, that's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. <laughs> So, uh, first of all, uh, my students uh, want to show something you. Okay. Wow, oh, this is the flag of Uzbekistan. <laughs> yeah, the flag of Uzbekistan and yes. the flag of India. One of my students will explain uh, about uh, our flag. You have explained very well uh, what's the meaning of your flag. And uh, in our Indian flag, it also has three rows of columns. First, saffron color. This indicates strength of Indian people. Second, this white color, which represents peace. Third, uh, green, which also shows uh, similarly to Uzbekistan, uh, mountain plants, fertility of India. This 
center uh, chakra is known as Ashok chakra. It has 24 stalks, spokes. Sorry. This uh, represents that India is a developing country and uh, Indian people should work 24 hours to be, become a developed country. Oh, I see. Thank That's you. Wonderful. Guys, thank you. Thank you, guys. It was awesome. Um, I want to ask you a question that, Matt, do you watch cricket? Uh, well, actually, no, I do not watch it I'm because, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of watching uh, like sports on TV, <laughs> but uh, I usually, I mean, if I have time, I watch like FIFA, World Cup, something like that. Uh, but I have a, a favorite football player, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. So usually when he plays, I watch his. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your question. Uh, one of my students, Sheetal, he uh, wants to ask one question. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. My uh, question is, uh, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Well, such a difficult question for me. Why? Because I love, I think, everything. I'm not like a picky person. Uh, I love seafood. I love meat. I mean, lamb, uh, beef. So everything which is uh, with meat is my favorite food. <laughs> So oh, thank you very much, uh, Liza. Uh, uh, oh, uh, one question is uh, Aditya. Okay. In mathematics, uh, is it that for you? Okay, can you repeat this? Because my connection is not stable. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Is mathematics is uh, uh, easy subject for you? Mathematics is easy for you? Math? No, <laughs> I'm not good at math at all. <laughs> I when it was when I was a student at school, I was always struggling with math. Honestly. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was very difficult I, subject. I don't uh, know what is the uh, I don't know uh, why mathematics is so difficult subject for all over world. <laughs> it's a big question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's true. That's a uh, closing time. Uh, so uh, we have not a plenty of time today, but uh, in future uh, we uh, can find uh, sufficient time so that we can interact to you with, uh, with you. Uh, now students have uh, had many questions to ask, but uh, uh, we have not much time. So it's a uh, time to say goodbye. Uh, one of you students uh, say goodbye in your native language. Oh, that's so cute. Katar Ahmed, ma'am. Higher, ma'am. Higher, higher. But uh, I would like to say something. Uh, it was a, a great opportunity uh, for me to learn about more about your culture. And thank you for inviting me. It was a great honor to talk to you, to talk about my culture and to explore your culture. And can you also teach me, uh, I mean, uh, tell me how do you say like goodbye in your language? Alvida. Uh, can you? Alvida. Alvida? Yes. Yeah. Alvida. You know what? We have almost the same word in Uzbek language. Uh, yes. Alvida. Uh, English, we say, uh, no, it's, uh, so, uh, your, uh, your basic language is sometimes is Urdu. So we can also speak Urdu in our country. So uh, there oh, is. Uh, there is uh, maybe some 
a word same in Ajwek and in India. That's why. So uh, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for uh, Aziza to join us. And it was a very splendid and uh, good session. And hope we will meet again soon also. Say goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh, that's, that's so cute.